stitch. It's called satin stitch for a very simple reason. It looks like satin. Whether it's done in silk or in wool, the stitches are so close together that they have a marvelous satiny effect. Here's my sampler, which I did when I was training at the Royal School of Needlework. We worked for four years learning all the different embroidery stitches, and the things we started on were the satin stitch because it was the simplest and most basic. If you look at this corner, you'll see that it's taken from a very old English cruel embroidery design called Jacobean. And you can see how beautifully shaded the leaves are done in bands of satin stitch, and the whole shapes, which were quite large and solid, are blended into the background by all these little sprinkled stitches around the edges. In England, in the 18th century, things began to get a little lighter in feeling. And here's a design done with satin stitch again, but this time a chevron filling, rather like Bargello, that needlepoint stitch. And over here is a gray leaf done entirely in satin stitch in one shade of gray with little blue veins to outline it. And each leaf is absolutely clear cut because of the angle of the stitches. Over here, this little pink flower was worked with satin stitch and then a fine line of back stitching to show how you have to hold down the stitches if they get a little bit too long with other stitches on top. Well, satin stitch is really awfully easy to do. Even a child of five could do it. But it's not quite as easy to get it absolutely even and smooth. I made this little sampler. It's really a little Valentine's pillow with lots of tiny flowers so that you could really see how satin stitch works in its simplest form. You simply come up one side and go down the other. Start in the center of a circle because then you'll get the angle correct and you won't get into trouble by the time, if you started in the side of the circle with a tiny stitch and increased as you went to the middle, you might be slanting in the wrong direction. And you want to keep your stitches pretty straight. I'm working on a frame don't want to needle you about this, but it's terribly important to always get the frame absolutely tight. It should be like a drum. And then when you stab your needle up and down, your satin stitches will be really accurate. You won't be pulling the fabric too tight. They'll be lying side by side, just like satin. Besides, on an embroidery frame, if there's a little space that you might leave by accident, you can always go back and fill it in. That little cheating is a little easier to do when the material is stretched out tight. You see, I think I might put a little extra stitch in there, and nobody will know it. It'll just give the circle a nice, thick, padded look. So. The angle of the stitch is important, and in this case, all the little flowers are done as separate individual silhouette shapes. But over here, I have something absolutely fascinating to show you. These are two pictures which come from the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, and they're all done in satin stitch, all in silk on black silk background. Here, the two figures are coming along, walking across what looks like a covered bridge. And there's a very rough sea in the middle, because all the satin stitches worked with different lengths of stitch, all in the same color. But it really gives the effect of a rough sea. And look at this sail, all the ridges of it, again in white silk. And over here, there's an enormous black butterfly which has spots on it worked in a different direction. Down here, this is a rather nice conversation piece. There's a whole group of figures, and the lady's skirt is obviously all folds of taffeta, because all the stitches show, although they're worked in the same color, 
it just gives you a lovely soft effect. And look at the spotted dog down here. He's looking up at his lady with, with a lovely little gold collar around his neck. These things were probably taken from old prints. And I think it's terribly inspiring for us because we could do all kinds of paintings with a needle. It's really just like a portable painting to do embroidery. I thought it would be a very good idea to make a sampler. Then you can try out all different kinds of satin stitch on one single design. And I started off to design this thing with a whole lot of lines and a few odd leaves here and there. And I decided that's rather boring. It's really much better to do something that you can use afterwards, even though this is going to be a sort of recipe book showing you all the different kinds of satin stitch that you can do. This flower, which is all done in shades of blue, is really almost the same color in each petal. But because the satin stitches are worked at different angles, you can see quite clearly what, where one petal begins and another ends. Keep stitching quite straight up and down on this petal. And where it comes together with the next one, you'll see quite a nice clear line of separation when I get to that point. Here we are. One more stitch to fill in. It's always good to put in an extra stitch to make quite sure that the material isn't going to show. One does get terribly Scottish with the thread, though, and go on until the bitter end. But you see, this petal goes at this angle, and this one goes straight up and down. So you can easily see where one ends and the other begins. Now, I'm going to make a parting in these threads so that I can do two little tiny back stitches underneath to end off. Because there's nowhere left for me to put them except right inside the petal. So when you've finished that, you can just bring it up and cut it off on the front and then push those stitches back and nobody will know your secret of what went on underneath. Then you just chop it off and it saves having to turn to the wrong side of your embroidery frame, which is always a good thing. Now, supposing you want to do a butterfly with two wings very clearly raised one above the other. You first of all work the underneath wing in satin stitch and then outline the whole upper wing with what's called split stitch, which is just like its name. You go down and you come up bang in the middle of the stitch and split it from underneath. This is an outline stitch, which is going to be absolutely firm around the edge of your petal, your wing. And it'll make a beautifully raised edge. You come up here and you go right down over the other side, right over your split stitch. This is going to give you two wings raised above the other. Even though the coloring is so close, I've got a rather medium shade of purple on the underneath wing and a royal blue in the top, you can see where one wing begins and the other ends because I've got that raised split stitch underneath. It makes a beautifully professional looking piece of satin stitch too. Nobody realizes that you did that underneath. You must keep your needle absolutely straight. When you come up, don't slant it. Bring it absolutely vertical. And then the same thing when you go down. Don't think that you have to do all the whole design in one texture. One of the lovely things about satin stitch is using different thicknesses of wool. I used some heavy rug wools and then mix them with the finer cruel wools. You see this flower over here is done all in thick rug wool and the next door flower is in the fine cruel 
using three threads and mixing all the colors. But I thought it would be rather nice to do a shaggy, heavy leaf over here in what is called block shading. And that's done in rug wool. So there I don't need the split stitch edge because it's really quite thick and raised. Just keep satin stitching. And one of the most important things about this is getting your angle right. So you might even like to take a pencil and mark the direction lines before you start working. And then you'll guide yourself and keep on the straight and narrow. This is going to be the next line, putting your needle just in between the stitches so that you don't get any material showing between those bands of shaded stitching. You end up with nice clear lines of color following the scalloped outline of the leaf, light, medium, and dark. But one of the most lovely things about satin stitch, I think, is padded satin. And I happen to be wearing my great-grandmother's skirt, which came from the Paris exhibition in 1851. It's all done in satin. You see, underneath that silk was all kinds of little paddings of cotton, white cotton. And then they were covered with the blue forget-me-nots and red roses, and the whole thing bordered with cream-colored padded satin stitch on the gold background of taffeta. She had an 18-inch waist, incidentally, and I had to let it out somewhat considerably for myself. But you may think that padded satin is difficult to do, but again, if you work on an embroidery frame, it's quite easy. First of all, make the first row of stitches as you usually do, and then go in the opposite direction, just taking a few stitches across to hold it flat. Then come back to the beginning again and go across the top. Now, your underneath rows can be worked quite uh, openly, and you don't need to take too much trouble with them, but the top row must be perfect. So keep your stitches side by side and not pulled too tightly so that the padding is nice and raised and doesn't get squashed underneath. All this is much easier said than done. But by carefully coming up absolutely straight, as I said, at the edge, and somehow as you go along, you develop a rhythm, and it's rather satisfactory when you see that wool looking so nice and close and shiny with padded satin. That's the way I did the body of this dragonfly over here. And I started with all the underneath stitching with three threads of cruel wool, and then I went over the top with a finer wool to make it really close. Well, too many stitches and too little time. But never mind, you now know all the different ways of doing satin stitch. And even though it's such a basic stitch, I think it's one of the most beautiful. See you soon.